Now let's look at some of the more advanced features that you can use for the Zeta Potential Measurement. If you navigate back to the Measure tab, you will find a lot of other advanced settings available for Zeta Potential Measurements. First, we will discuss about the different cuvette options. As previously mentioned, the most common cell for aqueous zeta potential analysis is the folded capillary cell. The folded capillary cell is disposable to eliminate any cross-contamination or unnecessary rigorous cleaning between samples. However, most samples in pure water only require a simple cleaning procedure to reuse the cell many times. The cleaning procedure can be found just inside the lid of the box on the folded capillary cells. The folded capillary cell is preferred for samples in buffer solutions or samples that can be sensitive to heating, such as proteins. Filling the entire cell takes around 800 microliters. However, there is a Malvern patented diffusion barrier technique if you don't have enough sample. This technique first involves filling the entire cuvette with your dispersant only and carefully pipetting just 20 microliters of sample in the measurement zone. This not only isolates the sample from the electrodes, but allows for low volume measurements. And remember, you can measure both size and zeta potential in the folded capillary cell using either one of these filling techniques. Another type of cell is the dip cell. As the name suggests, a standard sizing cuvette is filled with sample and the electrodes dip into the solution. You will notice the electrodes on the dip cell are much closer together in comparison to the folded capillary cell. In fact, they are nearly 30 times closer. What does that mean? This allows you to generate a much higher field strength to move the particles and measure the electrophoretic mobility. This becomes especially important for samples dispersed in solvents with a low dielectric constant. While you can technically measure aqueous samples with the dip cell, it is far more common to measure in the folded capillary cell to avoid Joule heating. The last cell type is the high concentration cell. Again, as the name suggests, this is used for samples in high concentrations that are opaque. For zeta potential, we measure light scattering intensity in the forward angle. That means we actually need to pass light through the sample to get some signal response. If the sample is highly concentrated to the point where it's quite opaque, it becomes more challenging to measure light scattered in the forward direction. The high concentration cell uses a small quartz cell with a much shorter path length in comparison to the folded capillary or dip cell. This allows us to measure some signal even when the sample is highly concentrated. For the pro and ultra models, all of these cells can actually perform both size backscattering or forward scattering, and zeta potential analysis back to back in the same cell. Simply select size and zeta as measurement types and fill out the details for each method. Now let's look at some of the data processing and advanced settings available for zeta potential measurements. For the analysis model, you will notice three different options, auto mode, general purpose, and monomodal. These modes refer to the type of field applied during the measurement and is sample dependent. In zeta potential measurements, we have the option of simply measuring mean zeta potential using fast field reversal, resulting in a phase plot like this one. If you select monomodal, this will only measure mean zeta potential and is suggested for samples in high conductivity media to avoid Joule heating. The general purpose mode will measure both mean zeta potential and zeta potential distribution. This means both a fast field reversal and slow field reversal will be applied to the sample, resulting in a phase plot similar to this one. The auto mode is basically how it sounds. The instrument decides, based on the sample conductivity, if it will measure just mean zeta potential or both mean and zeta potential distribution. Most users select auto mode unless the sample is in high conductivity media, then monomodal is selected. Under advanced settings, you will notice some options for automating the selection of measurement settings. We highly recommend using the automatic attenuation to avoid any damage to the detector. For the measurement process, most samples run in a short number of subruns, but you also have the option of limiting the maximum number of subruns. 
For example, you can limit to 20 or 30 subruns to protect samples and high conductivity media from Joule heating. You can also insert pauses between subruns or pauses between repeat measurements. For voltage selection, there are two types of samples that require more care, proteins and samples in non-aqueous media. In both cases, you have the option of slightly lowering the voltage to optimize the measurement using the manual settings. Here are some suggestions based on sample conductivity for manual voltage selections.